Welcome to SV Seeker. In this video, you're going to see some insulation work. Well, here's all the clips. This is the kind of stuff that's going on in this video. I think you'll enjoy it, especially the cannon. <laughs> oh, what are you doing? Underneath it, so it'll look right. like a double barrel thing. See it? Oh, oh my god. Cold air on one end blows hotter out the other. The week started off with a whole lot of insulation work. The aft cabin was first, and it's a lot of work with uh, that pink foam board, this one inch thick foam board. It gets measured and cut and fit in place, and then recut and fit it again. It's a really tedious job, but it's a great way of putting the insulation in as long as you have the mindset to be able to handle really tedious work. And uh, I was really fortunate that I had a couple of guys come in to help me finish it out. And we not only got the aft cabin done, but in this video you see we also get the forward cabin done. This is the first layer, so we still have one more layer to go after this one, and then it'll be done. This is the kind of work we do. We shove in the foam around the ferry strips, glue it in, and we're necessary just to hold it in place. And that's how it gets done. And now it's your turn. Shut off this video, turn off your computer, go outside, and work on making your dreams. Okay, so you're still here? All right, uh, we'll go on then. Got part of the back end done, creeping up the walls. Well, Mark from Texarkana uh, was coming back in, so we had to make a little stop for some cedar. How you doing? Hey! Yeah, look at there. Another stack of red cedar, six foot. Oh, hell. These aren't, uh, shit. You know, we're gonna have to use these as, as uh, furring strips. They're supposed to be five inches wide. They give you four. Yeah, but there's some fives. Oh, there are some there. fives. Yeah. And there's some, yeah, there's this some. is a weird set. Yeah, there's some in five, five, a bunch of fives in there. I okay, well, we'll peel out the fives. We'll use the rest for furring strips. Yeah. Hey, good to see you. Hey, man. <laughs> Now this time we're using an automotive clear coat because it has more UV resistance in it than Spar did. Simple two-part mix. You could probably brush it on too, but sure it goes faster with the sprayer. Paper's coming off. Looks gorgeous. All right, all right. Who wants to build Jack? There you go. Cat mess for you. Oh, what's that? What's that? What is that? Oh, 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 oh yeah, that's good girl. Yeah, here's yours. Here's your shorty, you like that? Nom, 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 nom. Uh, what a beautiful day. We got all of that planed yesterday, thanks to Bart. That was a lot of freaking work. They're pretty on both sides, so now all we gotta do is take them down to Tim and to use his saw to rip them in half and we'll have 3 8 inch boards. And the rest of that is for other projects, maybe cabinetry, don't know yet. And today's job is to make furring strips out of this pile. So I hope you're doing something fun and wonderful today. If you're not, find that thing, find it. Sam and I have come out this morning and uh, spent all morning slathering coal tar onto furring strips. We have a nice organized way of piling them up the that's helped out a lot. So tomorrow we'll go stick them into the forward cabin, I think. So we cleaned up all of our piles before it starts raining. And we intentionally just painted three sides of it so it can still dry out that one side. We'll bolt the painted side into the boat and then once it's had a little more time to dry, we'll paint that uh, remaining side. Bart's giving one of his famous long-winded tours. If you want to spend a lot of time on the boat, let Bart do the tour. Don't ask him about Vietnam, boy. You'll put him another hour. And it's time for our shade material to come down and get some warmth back in here. You want to check it out too? Yeah. This is David and Kelly from, I guess you're from Fargo. West Fargo. West Fargo. Oh, the better part of Fargo, huh? Yeah. <laughs> With a modified trike and to a sail trike. You actually rolled this thing. How much miles an hour wind did it take? It's about a 20 mile an hour wind to do 10. That's not bad. And for such a tiny little sail? That's not bad it's at all. It's flat in Fargo. Well, yeah, okay. Well, hopefully your roads are paved better than ours are here in Oklahoma. Well, and so you just use the rear suspension like it was. Yeah. And well, then, there we go, it's moving on. Sure <laughs> enough, man, it is. Not much wind at all. 
The shocks were were, were stock to the bike. What'd you weld this on for? Uh, I was gonna put fender. Oh, here. it had what well, it's gonna have a fender, and this is just the handle to lift it. Yeah. yeah, wind definitely moves it. Front disc brakes. Yep. Okay, can I try it? Yeah. All right, good. Does it have any gears? Yeah, it's eight speed in the rear. Oh, oh it's right here. Yeah. Ah, cool. You can shift while rolling or stop. Doesn't matter. Get it all. Are you done? Hey. You're looking at that cat. Don't look at the cat. This. Uh, thanks to watching videos of SV Seeker for the last <laughs> eight years, yeah. and realizing that not being good at something is no excuse not to give it a try. Amen to that. I started out building an electric bicycle from scratch, and uh, after I had that and had so much fun building it, I decided to build a tricycle. And it's a lot more complicated because you have steering geometry that you have to figure out and, and work. It, this came started out with a set of plans from Atomic Zombie, yeah. and then it got heavily modified from there. And then you made it yours. I made it mine. <laughs> and then it ended up uh, thinking, well, you know, I live in West Fargo, North Dakota, and that's a very flat part of the country, and we have high winds. And I thought I should have a sailing vehicle. I decided that I could. Uh, put a sail on this. I've got 14 square feet of sail and uh, I've only capsized one time and uh, I was trying to make a turn under under wind. Is that the road rash from And it? I got a road rash from it. Oh well done. And uh, Every adventure needs a good scar. And uh, broke one of my uh, hi-fi uh, speaker stands uh, when I fell over and uh, but I got back on and rode another hour. Uh, with a 20 mile an hour wind you get about a 10 mile an hour Thing Down without wind? pedaling, without pedaling. Well, this was all at a crosswind because I was being fair. Oh, okay, so you can turn around, and come back the other way right. then. So I was, I wait. I'm so lazy. I wait for a 90 nice. degree wind. <laughs> I hope it doesn't shift when you're way down range. So I can always get back home. Oh, well, that's so, cool. Uh, well, thank you for bringing it by and showing it to us. Oh, Appreciate I that. Watching your videos, and uh, I don't know what I'm going to build next, but I've got room on here for a motor, and I'm looking for someone that can build me a 50 cc motor that uh, will fit in the uh behind the seat and the frisbee is what the, the frisbee gives you lift if you get going fast enough <laughs> you can uh lift and i can adjust the angle the rotation it's really a camera no, mount it's a camera mount okay and you've got a knob down there that you can film wherever you like to look right yeah well that is creative as hell i just love it so can you put pontoons on it and go in the water <laughs> You want skis to go on ice, don't you? Yeah, I want skis on ice. Yeah. Sam has moved all our furring strips into the boat, and the trick to stacking furring strips with wet paint is put a piece of plastic down on top of the wet paint, and then stick your stick board on top of that and start a new layer. They're drying out very nicely in here. They're half the weight they were when we brought them in. And they dropped the rain from the forecast today, so we got another nice sunny day, which will make that forward cabin warm up lovely, and that's where we're working. What are you doing, taking a walk? Yeah, why not? What are you burgin' at? Postman here? Huh? Did you run him off? Gorgeous winter morning. It's gonna warm up to like 60 something today. And it's a Saturday, so we'll have lots of guests by today. We've got some exciting things to open up. The package arrived yesterday, we didn't open yet. Then I have not shot a lot of video this week. It has been very tedious work in the uh, uh, putting in the foam. Finishing the first layer of foam in the uh, forward cabin, and so it's clean up time. Then we'll get to start the second layer of foam. Pink room. I always wanted a pink room. Do we hate this job? It's a job. It's a job. It's, a, it's one of those tedious jobs. It's one of those things you just got to do when you're boat building. So every once in a while you got to get pushed through a lot of really tedious work. There's sexy work around here. That'd be uh, casting and welding and running the plasma cutter, but um, foam is not one of those things. It is a lot of meticulous work. You're trying not to get your finger dirty. Oh, look at this. Watch how lovely God's gift to you called a finger. Mm, this works better. Oh, it's just gorgeous. 
you do it any way you like. So anything you do is something I don't have to do. So we're caulking in any little gaps in it now to make it an airtight layer, as airtight as we can get it. But you can see the cuts are really close and when they're not, we fill in with a piece of foam and then we'll put the caulking over that to make sure it's sealed up. And again, the idea is no moist air against the hull, nothing to condense. Here, you get at that. Don't you have short people to do the short jobs? Doug? Yeah, I know. Why are you down here on the floor? Wasting my talent. Yeah, no, your talent is like seven feet above us. Let me show you up here in a corner. Just to give you an idea for how many little pieces are in the puzzle. Because we're going around the furring strips, the boards, and so there's just a lot of work in there. And every frame has got little pieces jammed in around it, even up in the corners and behind the angle iron. So it's a 100% sealed surface. And this is the stuff we're actually using for the caulking. It's PL300. Glues the panels in too wherever we need that done because they might be loose. But all the panels are actually cut and fit tight enough that they stick in there without uh, any glue or caulking to hold them in. That's done after the fact. This is the aft cabin. It's done the same way as the forward there. Uh, here's an example of a panel that's not quite tight enough fit and it bounces out. So all we can do is take a little piece of foam and wedge in there. A little piece of foam wedged in there, makes it tight enough, and he can come back across it and seal it up with the caulking. Working with us today is a Unabomber. Oh, not a Unabomber. <laughs> not a Unabomber. <laughs> Watch the keywords. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get banned for something. This is, this is Sam Houston from, uh, where do you call yourself from? San Diego, California. You still call yeah. San Diego? He's been yeah. traveling around the United States in a camper. And enjoying the United States, yeah. taking a break from, uh, he does um, high-end uh, copper work for roofs. I, I don't even afford, copper so damn expensive, yeah. I can't imagine somebody making yeah. roofs out of this well, stuff. You get, you know, 100-year roof. Yeah, you know. oh yeah, absolutely, 100-year yeah, yeah, roof. Yeah, yeah probably you want like you know. 600-year roof. Yeah, depending on conditions, yeah. yeah. I don't plan to live that long. Hey, in my hair, in hair. Oh, this my boss would always go 300 year warranty on the brackets and 100 year warranty on the gutters when we do gutters. He'd always say that. That's great. And he goes, Your grandkids are going to have to fix this. <laughs> it's messy, Doug. Yeah, of course it's messy. I wouldn't have given you anything Although, less than messy. Oh, look at this. I don't have to hold my block. It oh, stays yeah. You, you stack your, yeah, it's better than a. Uh, it stays wherever I need it. So I'm, I don't have to go bother and go getting you a, uh, a oh. little uh, thinger. What do you call those things? Remember, Doug. Unlock, or else it's going to just drip everywhere. Yes, I know it makes some nice slag tights if you don't let off the pressure. But uh, Jeff Miller here is back with us. Actually, he was. Uh, he, we did uh, the hydraulic tank in the engine room last time. You did the hydraulic tank and things. the batteries. Yeah. And we finished up the rope, um, the uh, the tender. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, and Jeff has a cool job. He was uh, a Marine, and they did they teach you a little bit of electronics to the Marines. Yep. And then he got out of the Marines uh, in one piece, and he uh, one piece mostly. Mostly. Mostly, and uh, a few extra pieces. And uh, he works on electron uh, microscopes now. It's weird. I didn't know there's so many of them around, but apparently there are. And not not just for medical, but for uh, steel mills, steel uh, nanoparticles. That's really big right now. Carbon nanotubes, stuff like that. Would you call it nail particles? Uh, nano. Nano particles. Tiny little things. I'm thinking nails. I think what the like hell ten nails? nanometers, five yeah. nanometers. We can measure those. So you're checking for people making what do they call those uh, bucket tubes? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, carbon tubes. Yeah. If you haven't looked at that technology, cool stuff. They'll be making boats out of it someday, I'm sure. Oh yeah. Not to be confused with carbon fiber. No. Not. The same. And then everybody remember, step on the wood. You miss the wood, you go in a hole. Hey, who's putting brakes? We fell out. To honor all missing and unidentified veterans. For NPR News. To me, the answer about how to get through the, the boring work or the tedious work is there's two things. First off, you got to find joy in it. 
Uh, you got to have the little successes about getting the little piece fit in just right and that feels good. And the other thing is you got to occupy your mind with something else because it's not going to take very much of your brain power to get that done. And for me it's audiobooks. So I listen to books and I got them hooked on it. Uh, we went through all of uh, Killers of the Flower Moon, which is a wonderful book about the Osage Indians just up the street here from us uh, and all the murders that happened to them, the creation of the FBI. So, fantastic book. I'm going to watch this too. Alexa, pause. All right, all right. So, Mr. Sam Houston, okay. you've been here for what? This is day. How many days have we been doing day, phone? Oh. This is day three on phone. Yeah. Yeah. Day three. And no, day four on phone. Day four on phone. Right. And uh, furry strips weren't much different than this either. No, they went faster though. Yeah. They faster. They're a little more interesting for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. So, it just fast so how do you deal with the ability to get up in the morning and do work like this every day? Um, Especially for the high dollars that we pay. I mean, you, you have to push that aside. Well, and I got a, I got a considerable raise. This yeah, week. we we tripled your raise, I think, this week. Yeah, yeah, uh, three so, times zero. And, you know, that, puts awesome. pressure, that puts some pressure on, you know, performance. <laughs> but um, I typically I kind of shut my brain off sometimes. But we've been listening to um, some books and music and. Uh, you know, the occasional joke here and there. Yeah. It kind of keeps your mind off uh, the tediousness, but it's all part of the process. So I think everything needs to be respected the same, you know? Awesome. Awesome. And you, your work is kind of like this, too. I mean, I mean, putting gutters on a house, sometimes you get to a corner and it's a complicated thing. Yeah. But a lot of it's straight runs, so. Yeah. Well, yeah. Or well, it well, like pattern layout. You know, like say if you're doing a leader head or something, and you have two intersecting radiuses that might not be. You know, it might just be. A lot of times we lay stuff out with French curve. There's no actual. You know, it's kind right. of like an easy right. to find. You know, it requires everything you got. Yeah, and everything you start is flat, so it's kind of sometimes there's trial and error involved. You know, so I'm kind of used to hey, do it a little this way. You know, almost like I. And that's how this is. You know, you put it up there and you, you kind of got to eyeball it because the wood's not straight. The, yeah. um, there's a lot of variables. So. There's no right angles in here at all. No. <laughs> no. no. Not even. But it's, you just make a piece of fits, you know. So, yeah. And if you don't, you, you shim it. <laughs> well, I appreciate you being here. You've done freaking yeah. awesome well, thank work. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, which means the caulking goes a lot faster yeah. too. Yeah, absolutely. Mr. Miller? Yes, sir. So, how do you deal with this? You called it tedious work. It's not tedious work. Yeah? You have this shape here, and then that shape. You had to cut a hole for that. You have these shapes, those shapes. It's not tedious. So you stink your way through it all, then. Yeah, it's it's a different thing. Every time I got to put a piece up, it's something new. Like different definition of tedious. But you're absolutely right. I mean, there's no two shapes that are the same in here at all. And it's so it's the, it's the challenge of getting them right to you. Oh, you never get it right. That's what the caulking's for. But that's what the challenge is. Yes. You're trying to get it fit in just right. perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's what Michael's done on his octopus out there. And you know, it's funny, this video we have of Michael that's coming up, um, he does our octopus. You'll see that later today. He does, I mean, he puts the little scratches on each little sucker cup to make it look fleshy. It's like that. Is there's a, just a mindset you have to get into, I think, and uh, I think Jeff's right. You pay attention to every little part, and when it gets routine, you distract yourself with something else to engage your brain. But it's work that has to be done, and you know, if you're not up for it, then you're not up for it, and that's too bad because you know, life's slipping by, and uh, you've got to every big thing that you have can build has some of those little parts in it. Alexa, please still counting. Still counting, I hold it. Starting now on Amazon Music. It's gorgeous. We're opening up our, our uh, floors again so we can move around in here. You know, I hate to bring that phone back down in here, but you're making space for it. I don't want to do that though. Let's put it up on deck. Well, you, so what you because we're going to be foaming in there. Right. Well, we can bring some of it down here for the second layers here. Okay, this is Saturday. If you want to come see the boat, Saturday is the perfect thing to do. Now, one of these guys is a CNC machinist named Matt and he's made a cannon and we're going to show you that okay because that's going on the boat but say hi folks hello there you go Saturday's 10 to 2 love showing you through the boat well, those canvas turned out really nice didn't they oh, oh, I yeah that's yeah. a lot of fuel for, for, for uh, are you the piece of organization 
The what? The, 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 the boat that's board. not going to be it's running on the thrown out of motor. Did you really well, <laughs> hurt? <laughs> 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 but if you ever seriously, you want to do that, I'll hook yeah, you up and, uh, and I'll give you my filter. To mark the tape. Oh, I, I want to do that. I think that's a great idea. You can use these filters. <laughs> Got to show you this. This is Matthew's creation. <laughs> now, you, we, you did this off plans on the internet, right? Well, I started with plans on the internet and then modified for what, you know, you, you gave me certain specifications that it needed to be so long, so... Yeah, whatever. yeah, yeah. So we changed things. And so the end result is a line throwing gun or a, uh, a signal gun or it could be used as an offensive weapon, but the idea is to mount them on the bulwarks of the boat up there on a pivot. So in the olden days, we'd call it a uh, swivel gun. And uh, Matt is the absolutely best person for doing this because, well, he likes firearms. Oh yeah, I got the base for it and everything. And he, you started off with uh, paintball. That's one uh, of your things. Just big bore air rifles is what I started. Oh with. really? You started with air rifles and dropped down to paintball guns? No, no paintball. I don't do much paintball. Really? Yeah. So your stuff is is air rifles. Big yes. bore air rifles. Big bore air rifles. You're the perfect man for this. We we hunt game, you know. Advertisement for it. Oh. Big bore air rifles. I thought it was paintball. No. It says pit bull air guns. I'm thinking paintball. Mm -hmm. You're the real McCoy. Yeah. We well, do. They, like we specialize in a. 357 caliber air rifle. Afternoon air gunners. Matt here from uh, Pitbull Air Guns. We're back out at the range today. We're going to be shooting 100 yards on the Pitbull. Heck yeah! Woo! That is awesome. That's like two inch group out of a bulldog at 100 yards. Woo! I'm a happy, happy boy. So I could buy a 357 air rifle off of you. Yeah. You don't just make parts for some other manufacturer. No, 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 we start, so what we started with was, it got started with the Benjamin Bulldog. Right. 357 air rifle, it's a bullpup design air rifle. And then, so we started tuning them and I bought one and started playing with it and made more power out of it and made, made them quieter and all that stuff. I varmin hunted with it at first. Right. Um, and then people were like, hey, that's cool. Can I have one of those? And it just turned into a business. Um, but we, we take a bulldog and turn it into a pit bull. I see. And so that's the reason why I we see. call it so pit bull, pit bull. I mean, we do more than that now. This isn't a potato gun, or is it? What's the cat? What's the, what do you consider these? You things? could consider this a potato gun, but it's got. It's not the old style where you just had a hole in it that you sprayed your hairspray and then struck a striker. It's got a. It's got what we call a. Some people call them different things. I call it a dump valve, but it's got a little valve back here, and the barrel comes in all the way to about here. And then you have a piston that has a seal surface on it that plugs up against the, and it stops the air from going on the barrel. Right. When you air it, you close this valve, you air it up. So the air is on the back side of this piston. It's actually front side and back side. And, uh, and it is chamber round. Yeah. Yeah. And so it fits the barrel, it fits this tube really close. It's just barely a slip fit. And then when you, the air pressure, because it's bigger on the back side of the uh, piston than it is on the front side, because you've got zero air pressure on this part, exactly. it holds it up against it. When you dump this, it drops the pressure off the back side and it just slides back a little bit and then all the air that's in this cavity here Rushes comes around, around and goes down the barrel. There's a 180 and goes down the barrel. And then we built just a simple little uh, line carrier projectile you got a groove in it. Groove in it so the line can run down beside it and then the line will be hanging out the end of the barrel. Right, so and the line ties onto the back and it goes in like this and fires out. Right, and it'll just carry the line. And then drags the line the rest of the way. And you've already fired this thing? I have. I've only fired it a couple times, but I have. And what's the range? I was getting about 75 yards. With the line? With carrying the line. Without the line, I actually... Carrying this line? Carrying this which line. Which is a stout line. It's 550 paracord. cord. Paracord. Right. Well, that is wonderful. And this thing won't even kill you. No, I, that's, I was trying to make something light for you that wouldn't hurt somebody if you actually yeah. hit them. So if you're firing they, towards somebody, this is the projectile they it use. It might piss them off. but Right. Yeah. <laughs> and if we bore a hole in that and put some lead in it, then it would be something that would go a lot further. Or we could just machine you something oh, yeah. out of aluminum, and it would go a lot further. So if we're shooting toward land, we could use something heavier, right. get the line a lot further out. And did you fire this with a heavier projectile? Yes. What'd you shoot? I shot a solid chunk of two inch aluminum, about three inches long. 
This is two inches diameter and three inches long. And how far did that go? About 375 yards. <laughs> yeah. That's nice. That'll reach in over a lot of surf breakers. Right. Now, so the reason for doing that is if there's somebody on shore that they've run aground with a boat or something, we can't get ours in there and getting a line to them is a complicated thing. So you get as close as you can. In fact, we can even take this onto the tender, get the tender in close to the breakers and then fire the line over the waves so that they can then use the small line to pull a big heavy line in. The tender takes the big heavy line back to seeker. We tie them onto the stern post at the rear and we can pull them off. We could drag them across rock at that point. This is glued together. It's all just pushed together because I didn't know exactly how you'd want to set it up. Right. But well, we, you know, can, if we can reconfigure it, it if we want to. If you did it straight up and down, then it, it wouldn't fold back. But like you could have it like this. Oh, very so clever. Just in case it was always pointed at the ground, it wouldn't fill up with seawater. Yeah. Seagull poo, any of that stuff. This is, you can loosen these clamps and slide it up or back. Is this a change. real thing? This is a real yeah. pipe fitting. Yeah, I ordered that off of Amazon. I love Amazon. Yep. This is wonderful. But you could, you know, move it forward or back to get a different center of balance. Like if when you let go of it, if you always wanted it to go down, you can move it back a little bit. Right. Yeah. Or if you always wanted it to point up, you could move it forward a little bit. Man, I didn't think this would be such a useful thing just out of plastic, but it is. Right. And it's lightweight. Well, this is just version one, remember? And how that? many PSI do you put in this? This one, I've tested it up to, well, I've, I've put 200 PSI in it. So I right. would say not more than 150. Just and when you fired, fired the uh, line thrower with the wooden element? I was only using about 120. Oh, okay, yeah, that's nothing. Yeah. I had a little bitty compressor that I could put in the back of my truck to take to the gun range. How loud is it? Well, it's not too bad. Well, I wanted um, it loud. 100, 110 decibel? Well, let's, 100 just, de let's just see. Okay. A couple of rags rolled up together for now. I'm not gonna press that in there first. You want the valve to close so that it is pushed up where it needs to go and then we can. Oh, then you shove the load down, okay. Make sure that this valve is closed and then you. Oh, you got another valve. Oh, I see that. You air up the it. valve, it's aired up. That's all it took to and charge you can it. Close that. So when I turn this, most of the air, or you're, there's a big section of air that's going to pop off the valve. Right. And the rest of it. But the most of it goes out the barrel. You ready? Okay. Yeah, ready when we are. <laughs> <laughs> One of the rags is on the boat up there. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta go home and change the WD-40? Yeah, any kind of lubricant. Just to help it go down the barrel a little bit. Just lay that in the groove. And then... What you use for the stopper material on that? That's a, um, it was in the pipe department. It was some kind of little coupler for like inch and a quarter, inch and a half tubing for the sewer or something or where it just, just connected them together. And don't ever, don't ever look over the barrel while you're loading it. Always right. have it beside just you. Just in case. And don't put your end, your hand over the end of it. Always hold it from the side. Well, you come come home with all your fingers, right, and your teeth. We're gonna shoot again. Hey, Bart, don't have a heart attack. So aired up. Uh, hopefully, we'll just go through the lines here. You ready? Ready. Holy cow! Oh, it almost hit the car. It was too high to catch. It's laying down there in the grass, but I swear it hit the it hit the mid center of the street. Yeah, that'll definitely do it. <laughs> well done, man. Well done. <laughs> now, see, originally I thought I said I saw this pit bull air guns. I'm thinking paintball, and so and then I sent you those plans for this thing because I didn't think you really knew what you were doing. I don't. No, you totally do. And then you sent back that reply that said, oh, with this PSI and this kind of reservoir you get, it's like, then they just like, I said, oh, okay. <laughs> Ignore anything I said, you take care of this deal and you certainly have. So this is beautiful, but this is not, this is not the end of it, okay? This is, you call this a prototype, but it's a working, usable, perfectly usable gun that a lot of sailboats ought to carry around. I mean, Technically, this was my second or third version oh, of this, cool. but the only thing I changed was the piston, the way the piston oh, actuated. Right. That was the only thing I changed. So if we 
put up a link to the plans oh, that you built this from? Is it close enough that they can get? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, whatever the links you sent me, yeah, will get you really close. Will get you really close. Yeah. It pretty much builds this gun. Yeah. But then, like anything in life, if you don't change a little bit, it ain't yours. Right. So this is yours. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, we appreciate it. Yeah, I'm glad to. All right. After lunch, we'll show you the the real gun. <laughs> so it's supposed to be. It says in there it's a 12 ounce ball, and this one's supposed to be 16. But you're going to use the 12 ounce ball. That's what right. I'm going to do that barrel for. You're right. And that's 12 ounces calculates to 5,250 grains. You know, like a normal pistol bullet, it's like 140, 90 grain, something like that. I thought grain was the measurement of the powder. No. Well, you do. You measure, but it's also, it's just a measurement of weight. Okay. They're weighing the bullets and the powder. Okay. So it's 5,250 grains. So we round that down to 5,000 just in case. Right. Um, and if I can get it moving 800 feet per second, which I think is doable, 800 feet per second is not that fast, that will be over 7,000 foot pounds of energy. Right. So to equate that, a 50 BMG has between 10 and 15,000. BMG. Browning machine gun. Okay. Anti-aircraft, the okay. big, huge modus. That is where you will be in a few weeks. This is what you must learn in a short time to beat the axe. Like a 300 Win Mag deer rifle. I don't remember exactly how much, but it's like 4,000. You go to Google and you type it in, and um, you do all that stuff. So I ran that through a website that does cannonball stuff. Yeah. And at 800 feet per second, with that amount of energy, at 15 degrees of elevation, not not just flat with the water, 15 degrees yeah. up. Yeah. It should travel about 1,500 yards before it hits water. 1,500 yards. Yes. Yeah. And if you run it to 45 degrees, it should go past 3,000. I think it was like 3,700. Of course, your accuracy is like non-existent. But. Well, yeah. What do you need your accuracy to be? Minute a boat? No. So I just need to go something that would go loud, bang, bang, with a yeah. splash. Yeah. And I think that's enough to convince that's gonna people. That's going to be we, a big splash. Yeah. We want you to turn around. And, go and with a way. rifled barrel, it should be at a hundred yards. It should be within six to ten inches i mean worst case scenario i'm hoping for better than that right but that's worst case scenario this is this the pattern you're using for that yeah. basic yeah. pattern oh this this one has a side cocking lever <laughs> this was what we make 357s out of 357 air rifles and it has a side cocking lever but instead we're going to have a big cocking lever up here what's the hole for you're going to be able to drop two rounds oh two my. of these oh my god right this there. is breech loading Oh. Close the deal. <laughs> oh, I like and then that. you shoot, you can cock and load again, and it'll load the second one in. You can lay a scuba tank on the ground, right. and you can get 10 shots before you have to fill up that scuba tank. Oh, like it'll fill, it'll, it's going to have a, well, this is the barrel. What caliber meter. would you call it? 155 caliber, or just 40 millimeter, and it'll have an air reservoir underneath it. So it'll look right. like a double barrel thing. For those of you worried about the rules, okay, uh, Rico over there is with Homeland Security. Uh, I shit you not. <laughs> Thank you. Tell the whole world now. Tell the whole world. <laughs> Blow my gig. You're not in the cover I'm going to open this like AVE does. No, you right. Don't you dare. I'll kill you if you do that. Don't get them dirty. I'm not going to get them dirty. Oh, the man. lacquer for touch ups. Oh. Okay. Did I tell you that Michael didn't overlook anything? Okay. Wow. Three. One, two, three. Down. <laughs> oh my God. Let's see it. Let's see it. Oh, oh my God. That's what I said. Oh, that's my beautiful. God. Mm, that God. is really cool. Stuck to the phone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But it'll it. come off. It rubs off. Yeah, it'll come off. The phone is, is on. Yeah, it rubs right off. That is gorgeous. He wraps around the spokes of the ship's wheel. Pitching. That's going to be yeah. Pitching. I've been looking at pictures of this thing for a long time now, and it just does not do justice to the, the work that he has in here. Let me show you here. There's the scratch marks that he put into them, so they look fleshy. And I tell you what, that is just absolutely stunning. So this is the hub that he goes over the top of. 
Yeah, so that'll be like that of sorts. And then the rods come in through. Look at that. It just perfectly oh, wow. fits. So that's how it wraps around. That's cool. And then this will be. Yeah, the, so there'll be one rim right here. And then there's a gap. And there's another rim. And that's the work that Hugh Hood did. That's in awesome. Walnut. That's going to be so cool. If that's not the best uh, helm on the water, call you a liar that is going to be so cool so michael thank you yeah that got it okay <laughs> well, i'm afraid of heights so i hope i don't lose my lunch north fork nebraska man we got wisconsin yeah. and one more thing arrived this week this is from larry reeves in lebanon ohio we often get asked especially when it's turning winter how we're going to heat the boat larry has the answer for us here I, these are out of Oh my god, these are brand new units. Oh my god, this isn't even used. I thought these were going to be used, Larry. This is a Wabasco uh, heater. All right, Larry, this is, this is a lot more box than I was expecting. That's the thing I'm used to seeing. That must be a pump. I don't know. I'm going to have to look at what this is. But this is the heater, so it actually has the flame inside here. Blows, uh, sucks in cold air on one end, blows hot air out the other. And uh, we could even use this to heat water with a with a heat exchanger out here added on to it. Very nice stuff. Thank you very much. And yes, I will figure out how it actually gets used. And this is the kind of heating unit we'll have on the boat. So each cabin will get one of these uh, or some form of it. So if we wanted to heat off diesel, we can. We also have a radiator system. So if we're running the engines, then we can just run hot water through the loop. So it kind of depends on what we're doing. If we're under sail, this thing is a very efficient way because you don't have to burn much diesel to get a lot of heat out of this. Oh yeah, okay, this is perfect. That's the heater for just uh, heating a cabin. This is the one that heats up the truck's engine coolant. Now this one can be used to heat up our engines, but it also can be used to heat water and it can be used to be heat water and flow through our, uh, our, res our um, radiant heat system that uses the radiator. So, uh, damn, this covers both of them. That's sweet. Yeah, beautiful fall evening to cap the day off, and tomorrow, more boat work. This is just high tech music box. What do you have in there? Bluetooth module, battery controller, lithium ion battery, and some laptop speakers. <laughs> Where's the speaker? Oh, that one?